Hi guys, I hope your October is going well. Um, I know mine is, I'm having tons of fun. Obviously playing about with these lovely green skins. And as well as obviously loving how they look, I just love how the, uh, they give themselves some silly names. Like these dudes, some flash gits. <laughs> so yeah, use this sort of thing. Uh, obviously gonna take these guys off the sprue and assemble them. So need some cutters, some glue, and a nice scalpel there to, well, in this case, to get in at the box. As sometimes they do wrap these rather well. And unless you've got nice long sharp nails, yeah, it's difficult to get into. So as always, I get my miniatures from Chaos Cards. There's a link down below, guys. And there's also a discount code down there to get you 5% off whenever you spend £30 or more on, well, on some miniatures. And it doesn't matter how many miniatures we have, well, there's always room to get more. So, yeah, I was obviously wanted to do a little orc sort of kit bash conversion pirate themed thingy. Um, so, yeah, these uh, <laughs> these flash kits, uh, obviously they have some crazy sized guns on them. Uh, so I'm not going to use any of the guns as it is just the, the pirate look I want. Uh, and more so the captain. So I'm going for this chap here with a lovely, uh, lovely flowing cloak. And I've chosen the head that's got, well, the, uh, the best sort of uh, pirate captain hat on, really. Um, so, yeah, that's why obviously I've gone for this dude. I was going to do a few little changes to him, as you would have seen from the thumbnail. Um, yeah, he's lost his leg, which I think every good pirate needs to have a few battle scars and wounds. So, yeah, this guy is going to get, well, a good old peg leg. Uh, and this is where obviously 3D printing just comes into its own. The fact that I can just go online, type in what I'm looking for, and yeah, within like an hour, I've downloaded it, put it in the printer, and I've got it exactly the size I need. And that's the other thing I always say that I love about 3D printers. It's not just being able to print things that you want, but printing things the exact size you need, and being able to adjust and amend them, well, however you need, really. So yeah, I've printed out his little uh, his little leg here. I will leave links down below, guys, to all the STLs that I do sort of use and find. Um, just so if you want to use do something similar, yeah, you know where I get the bits from. And just like his peg leg, I've done the exact same thing for his arm. And yeah, I've printed out a, a crab claw. Um, I couldn't find a crab claw on its own, so the actual uh, STL I downloaded was like a full crab. Uh, but then, yeah, obviously just chop off the bit you don't want and just keep the bit you do want. And again, printed it out to the exact size so it fits him like a glove. So that's him pretty much done. I'm going to use one of my bases that I, well, I like to use every now and then. Uh, this is available on my uh, my Patreon page if you want to go and use it. And then, yeah, yeah, again, so I found a couple more things online. Uh, these are on Thingiverse, so they're nice and free. So I've got a ship there and what looks like, well, hopefully it looks like wavy waves. And the good thing here, I'm using Tinkercad, very easy software to use. And I generally use it to sort of join things together. Or in this case, as you can see, I'm taking bits away. As I wanted the boat to be able to sort of sit nicely into the water. So it's simply a case of turning the boat into a hole, uh, lining that up where I want it, and then joining the two together means the hole gets taken away from, well, the other objects. And there we go. I've got a nice little space there for the boat to fit in. And the reason for doing separately is, well, I'm going to use this transparent um, resin from G-Tech. Again, link down below, guys. Um, as yeah, I want to print off the, the sea or the water, well, in a transparent colour. And then obviously the boat will be, well, a normal colour. So yeah, this is the first time using this, uh, this G-Tech transparent one. And yeah, I'm pleased with the results. Obviously, when you first pour it in, it does, well, there's obviously a lot of air mixed in there, I guess. Uh, but these seem to go away, and when it prints out... Yeah, you don't get any sort of like air bubbles or any of that nonsense in there. Um, comes out a little bit yellow looking, but that's generally when you cure it, it seems to change colour. But as you'll see later on, um, yeah, you can make it go back to looking, well, a nice sort of clear looking resin. And uh, there we go, say the boat fits in perfectly, which is, yeah, love it. Nice and simple, but uh, I think it looks pretty cool. And the other thing I wanted to print out, well, some little tentacles. As, yeah, if we're going to have a little boat here, we need to have, well, an octopus or something below. Um, yeah, trying to steal the captain's treasure. Arr. There's no prizes for guessing how I'm going to paint this uh, this little scenario. As, yeah, it's still slap chop, guys. Until something comes along that I find better. Um, oh, I might have just knocked his arm off there. Um, yeah, slap chop is how I'm always going to do these things. Prime in black, dry brush white. Uh, and then, yeah, good old army painter speed paints for the win, really. Nice and quick, nice and simple. Uh, but results, I, I just love. Um, yeah, now I've knocked him off there as well. 
So this is where sometimes I might get a little impatient when I glue things. Um, yeah, I may not leave them long enough. <laughs> Even though supposedly this is super glue I'm using, it is the cheaper side of the super glues as it does take a good 15, 20 seconds to, uh, well, to harden. Uh, obviously, in some cases, even longer. So the bases I like to keep nice and simple. Just do a little bit of dry brushing with some sort of copper bronze, just to give it that, well, copper bronze sort of look. <laughs> uh, yeah, it really does uh, say what it does on the tin and does what it says. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, I'm waffling. So the C simply gets glued down onto, uh, onto the base. But my measurements must have been just a fraction off as yeah there's a little bit of a gap around the outside and i could have just left it but sometimes little things like this play on my mind and i need to correct them so i'm using some good old uv resin just to sort of like go around the edge and then getting my little uv light just to well instantly cure it and this is just a nice way that obviously it's going to finish off the edge and make it look more like the c well it does fit <laughs> does fit this base uh, better than it would have done if I didn't do this. So yeah, good old UV resin. I do kind of use this quite a lot as, well, kind of a filler, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased I did this and I'm pleased how it looks afterwards. So I'm really pleased how the transparent resin turned out as now I'm going to paint over it uh, using the good old sort of army paint, the speed paints. So nice and translucent so you can still sort of, well, kind of see through it. And yeah, I think this works really well. Um, I say the transparent uh, resin it did obviously come out nice and clear originally But then when you cure it it seems to sort of take on this little yellow sort of tinge hint to it uh, But yeah painting it with the uh, the speed paints seems to get it to look well like it was nice and clear So obviously this stuff goes on the printed bit as well as that uh, UV resin just to sort of tie it all in together um, And yeah again, I'm really sort of pleased how this look it definitely has a well, a clear sort of blue, watery sea, well, look. So I'm have to do that more often. As always, it takes no time at all to, uh, well, to paint any miniatures using the old slap chop technique. Um, and yeah, so I've been doing this now for good over a year. And well, I couldn't even imagine how many miniatures I painted this way. Um, and if I hadn't sort of stumbled across this method, uh, yeah, I think the number of miniatures I would have painted over the last year, I could probably count on, well, both my hands. But as it is, yeah, Slap Chop has really obviously changed everything that I do now in regards to painting. Um, and this is kind of a way I start off doing vehicles and terrain as well. So yeah, Slap Chop can be used for well, pretty much anything you really sort of do. Um, definitely the smaller areas or smaller miniatures with more detail, obviously it does work a whole lot better than big sort of uh, big flat areas. So I recently got hold of the Army Painter complete set with 90 odd um, speed paints in it. And i have just going through it, funny enough, this morning and there's about 20 different greens. Um, yeah, I think in the past I haven't had about a dozen greens and I thought that was a lot. So I've got 20 greens that I'm going to be using for Orc skins. So there's going to be a video coming up guys where I'm going to well show the comparison of all the 20 greens that I've got just so you can see, well, which green you think would work best for your sort of orcs. Um, I've definitely got my top top three favourites, but I say, because they've got this new 20 range, there's a lot there I haven't used yet. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that, as I'm making, well, the usual sort of thing, the old uh, bottle tops. So, yeah, the, um, the orc heads are going to be going on top of the bottles, but painted in, well, whichever green, obviously, bottle they're on top of. Anyway, back to this dude. Um, yeah, again, I love, uh, I love painting. I love painting. I love making. Um, yeah, as I say, 3D printers. Well, 3D printers and Slap Chop have definitely changed. Um, yeah, how I make things, what I do, and the amount of content um, that I can make because I have so many ideas of what I want to do, and I can make them all come to life with yeah, 3D printers and Slap Chop. So this dude's almost done, and there's a few things I wanted to try with the water. So I don't really do many uh, many sort of dioramas with water, um, and yeah, it's a case of, well, you try, and you fail, and you try, and you fail, and obviously you watch other people and see what they do. So something I've never used before, uh, this water texture, which looks more like sort of face cream, but uh, yeah, don't put it on your face, um, as this stuff is, well, it's weird, it's hard to explain, explain what it is. It is, it's like a cream. Um, you kind of paint it on, dab it on, place it on, I guess. Um, but then this stuff, it dries, it's kind of like a PVA glue, I guess. Although, 
a lot more expensive. Um, yeah, as you kind of like dab it on, uh, you can try and make little pigs with it. Say so it's reasonably fixed stuff, and then it is a case of you leave it um, for a long time. I think it was about 17 hours or almost a, a full day before it sort of fully dried, and then it starts to clear in colour, uh, which is really good. So I say never used this stuff before. Always fancy having a go at it, um, but yeah, it's not cheap. But you shouldn't really use too much unless you're making a humongous diorama. So yeah, I, as you can see, I basically put loads and loads of dollops of it. Um, and then I try to sort of make it into like little peaks as though the tentacles are coming out of the water. And they're obviously making a little bit of a splash. And then when it did all finally dry, um, yeah, all these sort of like peaks in the, uh, the water. I just wanted to sort of get some uh, white dry brush uh, and just sort of like touch those areas to make it look like, uh, well, foamy sea. Uh, and yeah, again, it's the first time I've ever done this kind of thing, and I'll have to admit, I'm really pleased with, well, how things came out. As, yeah, I think it's a great little uh, little diorama, I love the effect with the water. Definitely going to do more sort of water effects um, for some other dioramas. Uh, but yeah, nice and simple, nice and effective, and, well, I'll have to admit, I'm, I'm very chuffed with myself. So let's see this chap in all his glory. Guys, I hope you uh, you enjoyed the video and you like how this little chap came out. So there certainly are a lot more orc videos coming out this month, guys. Whether they're kit bashes, conversions, or full-on 3D printed stuff. So yeah, if you like orcs and you like well, in general, what I do in the little builds and dioramas, yeah, if you could hit that subscribe button, that'd be awesome. Click on the bell so you don't miss out on any videos. As I am now getting into a regular routine of posting a video every Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. UK time. There was another video on the screen, guys. If you can give that a click, see more of what I do, that'd be awesome. And where possible, if you can share my videos, hit the like button, leave lots of comments, that'd be wonderful too. Big shout out and thank you to my lovely patrons, Chaos Cards, Print Minis and the Colour Forge for helping support the channel every month. It really does mean a whole lot to me. You guys take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.